Hey, what's up? My name is Cameron Doherty, and this is the ASIO Cascade Slim. It's a slim mechanical keyboard that I've been using for over a month and have absolutely loved it. Let's talk through what the fundamentals are, what's unique that makes it special, and then some of the concerns that I have, and then we'll round it all out by saying who should buy this keyboard? Who's this keyboard for? So let's start with the fundamentals. Now the Cascade Slim keyboard is a 75% keyboard, so it has its full function row across the top, it does have home and page up and page down down the side and full size arrow keys. And I think this is a great compromise for somebody looking for a small compact keyboard without losing the functionality of going to a full 60%, which loses that entire function row. Now, up until just recently, this has been the only version of the Cascade Slim that ASIO has sold, but they do have a Kickstarter going at the time of filming, which is for a 98% keyboard. If you're looking for including that 10 key and having a little bit more flexibility there with the keys. Below the keys around the side, you'll see there's this beautiful aluminum top case. Now this is the space gray version. It also comes in bronze, but this is a nice touch and really makes it feel luxurious and, and very premium uh, in its appearance and also adds a nice level of rigidity to the keyboard. So you're not gonna get a ton of flex and it's gonna be pretty stiff and solid on your desk. Now in terms of typing angles, there are three different height settings. You can have it at four degrees or with the adjustable feet, you can get to six degrees or nine degrees. And the nice thing is that because this is a slim keyboard, even when you go up to the steepest nine degrees, it's still very low to the desk. So you don't have to feel like your hands are floating up or really extending above the desk or feel like you need a wrist rest to sort of raise you up to that proper height. The slim nature of it makes it nice and easy so that you're not straining to get there. Around the back, you can see that it is USB-C powered and you can use it either in a wired mode or in Bluetooth mode. And the great thing for those productivity users is that it does support up to three devices in Bluetooth pairing mode. So you can switch between devices and switch between wired and wireless very easily. In addition to that, it supports Mac and Windows and you can toggle it on a switch on the back as well. Now, when you get to the keycaps, it has both the Mac and Windows keys on a single set of keys. So you don't have to change out your keys, which is great, but it does mean that the keys are just a little bit more cluttered than they would be otherwise. Speaking of keys, these are ABS keycaps. Now for you keycap lovers in the comment section, you're gonna tell me that PBT is better, and in some ways it is. So the biggest thing to know is that because these are ABS, that does mean that over time, they're likely to get a little bit shinier uh, than you would expect from a PBT. So, in terms of what you're going to get longevity wise, just know that the glossiness might increase a bit as you use them. I happen to love the keycaps. They have a nice shine through for the RGB below so that you can see it actually illuminating the key itself rather than just around the key. And this color scheme is known as forest light. And basically up until just recently, you could get forest light and forest dark, and that corresponded with the aluminum shells as well. But just recently they did release a customization option on the website, which allows you to mix and match and also bring in some more premium keycap sets that are a little bit funky, uh, but might fit your taste. Now, what I think of these is they're a little bit sort of retro-ish. Uh, they're a little bit hard to describe, but I do love the green. I think it's a beautiful shade of green and the gray and white sort of looks like a bit of a retro PC aesthetic and it kind of can stand in contrast to a lot of people's more modern setups and I kind of like that, but for you, you're gonna have to take a look and see what you think. Now, because this is a slim, low profile keyboard, it does use a specific low profile Gatoron mechanical switch. And this means that you can't just throw any old switches in there, you need to make sure that they're low profile ones, but you can, when you're buying, choose either a red, brown, or blue switch type. Now, if you've never used mechanical before, my personal recommendation is to go with the brown. I tend to think that those are the most agreeable and that is what I chose to use in my keyboard. Now, these switches are hot swappable, which is awesome, which means you can customize this keyboard if you wish. And then on top of that, they are pre-lubed and that really, really stands out in the sound test that we'll talk about later in the what makes this keyboard special section. Now, below that, what makes that even better is that there is actually sound insulation inside the base of the keyboard. There is a dual layer damper of silicone and EVA foam, 
and this makes it stand out even more in terms of the sound because those two materials together are gonna take away that metallic ping you get and that hollow sound you can get in some more basic mechanical keyboards and really gives it that more mechanical, just thunk and solid feel to it. Once again, it comes out in the sound that we're gonna talk about later. Now, finally, within the case, there is a 2000 milliamp hour battery. It's a little bit smaller than some competitors that have 2,500 milliamp hours. So you might find yourself charging a little bit more often. In my practical use, I found that it lasted about a week and that tends to be standard with these. So I'm used to just plugging them in periodically as they get low. Uh, so if you're somebody that is a heavy, heavy user, you might wanna just keep that in mind and plan to either use it wired or just understand that you're gonna have to charge it a little bit more than you might some other keyboards. And now, all of this comes in at a total of 139 US dollars. So for 140 bucks, you're sitting pretty much in the higher middle of this market. In terms of the slim mechanicals, you can get up into the 170 mark, but you can also get much closer down to 100. So you're sort of in the middle, a little bit on the higher side. I think it's worth it for the premium product. And now we're gonna talk about what makes this special and why I'm referring to it as premium. Let's talk about the things that make this unique. Now there's three main things that I think really make this keyboard unique and special. And the first one of those is the attention to detail and all the little things that they focused on when making this. So it goes as far as the A key, which matches with the A from their logo. It's essentially an upside down V, a simplified A, and it looks super cool to have that little touch letting you know that it's an ASIO keyboard. Also on the keycaps, there's a lot of small details for what the function aspect of the key is. And that's really nice when you're not remembering or not sure what the function of each key is. And it gets even better when you're dealing with the RGB controls. So the RGB on this has several different modes and each one can be changed for colors or for brightness or even for the speed of the effect. A lot of other keyboards will do this one of two ways. They'll either have software that you need to install on your computer to manage it, or they're gonna have a hidden sort of function key scheme that you're gonna have to look in the manual to figure out how to operate. And what those do is they do keep the keys from being cluttered, but what ASIO's approach does is allows you to quickly reference to what these are and make changes as you see fit and test around and play with it without needing to download software or look anywhere else. I think it's awesome and I think it's a great touch on why these keycaps are particularly nice for this design. On top of that, the shift and enter keys and backspace all use these nice simplified arrows that just strike my eye nice. For some reason, I really like them and they look great, I think. And then the last thing, which I think is a really cool touch, is the way that you tell how much battery is left on the device. So if you do function and escape, it'll actually light up between one and 10 on the function row and let you know how much of your battery remains. And because this isn't something that has long running software, it's nice to be able to do that straight from the device rather than having it just suddenly die when it's done having battery. That's a great way to be able to see it at a glance and check anytime you need to. The second thing I think that makes this keyboard unique and special is just how compact it is. Now, this is a slim mechanical keyboard, which already means that it's gonna be smaller than most other mechanical keyboards. But the thing that makes it super unique is how little bezel there is. And to borrow a term from displays, the area around the keys themselves on pretty much every other keyboard like this that I've used is much more substantial. And instead what you wind up with is basically the keys and nothing else. It completely cuts off and you don't really see anything else. If you're going for a minimalist, small desk aesthetic, this is great because it's not gonna take up any extra space. It's only as much as you need to get the keys that you need for a 75% layout. And even if that's not something that's of concern, even if you're not dealing with a small amount of space, it just looks nice. There's no extra materials, there's no extra junk, in your vision, it's just the keys. Now the last thing to talk about and what makes this special is the true quality and sound of this keyboard. I've tried a whole bunch of low profile mechanical keyboards and I have not found one that sounds as satisfying as this keyboard. 
Let's give it a listen. The sound of the keys is full. There's none of that hollowness. There's none of that metallic ping that you can get in some mechanical keyboards. It sounds like a custom built keyboard, or at least as close as I've found uh, without actually being custom built. And all of that for $139 showing up ready to go at your doorstep is amazing. It's something that I have not been able to find to date, and I don't know when the next time I'm going to be able to find something that is comparable. I think it's a number of factors. It's the pre-lubing, it's the fact that there's dampers already, which is something that generally is done when you're custom modding your keyboard, and those things add up, and those things give it a special feel. When I gave this keyboard to my wife and let her try it out against several others that I had, she was immediately drawn to it and just said it feels amazing. And so that's something that I don't think you can put really a great descriptor on it. It's hard to explain it without feeling it, but I promise you the typing experience on this keyboard is something special. Now, unfortunately, everything with this keyboard is not perfect. And the first thing that I wanna just call out is that the, the maker of this keyboard, ASIO, is a pretty small company. And so at the moment when they release new products, they put them out on Kickstarter. And there's nothing against companies that use Kickstarter as a way to generate the funds and use that as a way to generate interest. However, that does mean that most of the time you're ordering from them, particularly if you want to get a better price, you're having to wait to get your keyboard. So they're doing runs of keyboards when they're released and they're putting them out for those early bird pricing to try and incentivize you to get one. And once again, nothing wrong with that, but you need to understand how that impacts you as the customer. So if you're ordering it through Kickstarter, number one, you're supporting a company. You're not truly buying a product. So though I had no problem getting my keyboard and I know tons of other people have had no problems getting theirs, technically, if they don't ship you a product, you don't have the same recourse as if you bought something through a regular online marketplace or through them directly. Uh, where you would be able to dispute a charge on your credit card, for example, if you donated, essentially donated to uh, a Kickstarter, there's not the same recourse there. So I trust the company, I think you should too, but you should always be aware when you're making a purchase like that of the risks. And in addition to that, I had some shipping delays. Now, I ordered it earlier in 2022 and the entire global shipping market has been a bit of a mess in the year 2022 and so it's understandable that companies are going to run into that, especially smaller ones. For me, I ordered on August 7th uh, and there was an expectation. There was a sort of disclaimer saying that they weren't going to ship until later in the year. I understood that that was totally fine. However, there wasn't very much communication and it wasn't until I reached out to service and said, hey, just checking in on status and then having to follow up on that email that I finally did get a response that said, so sorry, we've had delays we're getting it shipped out this week. And it did show up that week, which was great. However, that week was November 3rd. So it did take three months for me to get my keyboard. I did know that it was gonna take a while, but I did have to reach out to service and I do wonder when it would have arrived if I hadn't reached out. It may have been the exact same week or that may have prompted them to kind of bump me to the top of the list. I'm not really sure, but again, it's something that you should know, smaller company, the weird world that we're living in right now with all sorts of shipping issues and logistical problems, you might have to wait a little bit to get your keyboard. Now, the last thing I wanted to highlight was the fact that I did have one key arrive slightly out of place. The, the W key, the switch itself, was just not in entirely. Uh, so I did was able to use the tools that they sent, remove it, place it back in, 
still went in a little bit wonky when I did it, so I think it's kind of understandable there must be some little small defect that was preventing it from easily going in. The third time was the charm, because when I put it back in a third time, then it worked just fine, and I've had no problems with the key. However, when you get, first get the keyboard, it was easy to see that one of the keys was sticking up a little bit more, so there's just a really small quality control issue there. But the one thing to think about there is that quality control is not necessarily the same as quality. I think the product itself is of great quality. Quality control is just making sure that the output is always consistent, and having a switch slightly off is just a matter of quality control. That can be fixed. The quality of the product itself, totally fine. So those are all the things I think you need to know about the Cascade Slim keyboard. And that just leaves one question of, who is this keyboard for? Who, who should buy this? And I think it's somebody who wants truly the utmost quality, the, the best you can get readily buying versus DIY. So if you're somebody that wants to have that custom built DIY keyboard feel, but doesn't have the time, the money, the patience, the whatever, this is the keyboard for you. With a caveat though, that this is also only for you if you're willing to wait a little bit and deal with potentially some Kickstarter issues and things like that. So if you're not pressed for a keyboard right now and you're willing to spend that $140 to get a truly incredible keyboard that comes ready to go in the box, the ASIO Cascade Slim is a great option. Thanks for watching.